Hi, I'm Linda Edwards, The Cooking Chemist, and tonight I'm going to do um, chicken parmesan in the air fryer. So this is my prep. This is the um, coating trays, and it comes with a tool for handling your whatever you're coating. In the first tray, I have some flour along with the Italian seasoning, and the I, I put it in here, but I have the coarse sea and Himalayan salt, which is the best salt. And so this is the old fashioned grinder, but we do have a salt and pepper grinder set. This tray just has egg and a little bit of water. And then this tray has some bread crumbs and some panko crumbs. And I grated some um, Parmesan cheese into that tray. So that's my three trays. So I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way. <clears throat> so I have room to do things. All right, <clears throat> first thing I'm going to do is use the meat tenderizer to um, punch the meat out and tenderize it. This tenderizer is so wonderful. It is so heavy. I mean, when you hold it, it's just like, it's really solid in your hand. It's got a flat side, which I use to, like if, if I've got shredded, pre-shredded cheese in big bags and you know how it sticks together in the freezer and so I will pound it with that or you can crush graham cracker crumbs which you'll see if you watch my cheesecake in the quick cooker demo I do the, uh, the uh, graham cracker crust with this um, you can do bags of ice you know to break up ice you can just do so many things whatever you want to crunch without putting holes like this won't put holes in the in the cheese bag um, but for doing tenderizing meat I prefer to use the spiky side. So I always store it with the smooth side because um, that's the side I most often grab for all those little things that I just want to break apart. I even use it for some um, dishwasher detergent that had caked up <laughs> the other day. Um, so it's just handy for so many things. It's not just a meat tenderizer. Anything you want to break up is just wonderful. So I'm going to take this meat and I'm going to pound it Both sides. And then I will put it in the flour. By the way, this tool, this end is for dipping chocolate, just in case you're wondering why, what's that for? Okay, so then we'll put this in the egg. And then into the crumbs. are the air fryer trays that come with the air fryer. So I simply put these on the, on the trays. So rather than you watching all of me do all of this all over again, um, I'm going to stop it and then I'll come back when I get ready to use the air fryer. Okay, I have done all four pieces of my chicken parmesan and they're ready on the air fryer trays. I forgot to mention my cutting board. This is the large grooved cutting board which is, I have the grooves on the bottom side um, because the, this side is totally flat, so it is reversible. So since I wasn't doing anything juicy, I just used the, the flat side. So anyway, so I'm going to remove this cutting board now so that I can bring the air fryer over. I normally keep my air fryer um, on the counter over here. I'll show you. And if I'm just doing something little like reheating pizza, it, it's supposed to have six inches of clearance. So I can't really do stuff with it under the counter because it, it blows hot air out the back. So if I'm just doing something small for a few minutes, like, you know, reheating heating pizza or doing something like that, I will simply turn it like this. And so that it's out from under the counter and that hot air is blowing that way. But what I'm going to do, when I do big jobs like the chicken parm, if it's going to be 
you know, French fries or shish kebab or stuff like that, then I do bring it out to the island so that there's plenty of room there. Okay, so all I have to do now is plug it in. And <clears throat> this is the drip tray that goes in the bottom, which is hand wash only. And so I'm gonna put in these two trays and there may be some crumbs that drip down into that drip tray, but it's no problem. And even if they drip down into the door here, this door is removable. So I'll show you that later, um, how I can remove that. So normally you just use two trays. There is a place in the bottom for a third tray, but I only use that for dehydrating. So I do have a third tray, which comes in handy. So if I have one tray dirty and then I need two trays, I still have another one. So you, you put one in the top and one in the middle and this says to, uh, and we'll, we will reverse it when it's halfway through. So for the chicken parm directions, there is chicken parm in the cooking guide that comes with the air fryer. And I mostly followed those directions, but I will follow the timing of it. <clears throat> so all you do is you turn the little knob until it says air fry, whichever one you want, air fry, bake, roast, rotisserie. Rotisserie automatically makes the rotation. If you like put the basket in, or if you're doing shish kebab or something else, um, if you don't press rotisserie, if you press something else, but you still want rotation, then you can push the rotate button yourself. Okay, so air fries automatically at 400, bake is 350, roast is 375. And of course you can put a custom button to do any temperature or any time that you want. But I want to do air fry for this. And so I'm going to push to select air fry and then notice the time blinks. So the cookbook says to do 18 minutes. So I'm gonna do 18 minutes and then I push to select that and it starts. So it's very, very simple. If I wanna see what's going on, I can you know check on it by just looking. I can open the door with no problem. It stops and I can close the door and it starts again. So it's, it's real convenient. <clears throat> So all I have to do is wait for this to finish. It's going to beep when it's halfway through to remind me to rotate the trays down, which is very easy to do with the mini oven mitts. So I keep these mitts hanging on little uh, drawer handles on the side of the island. So this, I love these. Um, so these are real handy and it's really easy to pull one tray out and pull the other out and rotate them. Um, these mitts are really just perfect for so many things. They're really a must for the air fryer and for the quick cooker. Um, definitely a must. All right, so <clears throat> I'll have one more video in this series showing how I clean the air fryer, which is really easy. I mean, even if you're doing a rotisserie chicken, I mean, all the mess is just down in that drip tray, which is cleaned so easily. And I'll show you how to take the door off to clean any crumbs out if you because you know sometimes you don't have crumbs but for something like the um the parmesan chicken then you do have crumbs so all right so there will be one more video to follow after this hi i'm linda edwards a cooking chemist and this is part two of the chicken parm this is the finale actually you can see it says n so it's finished and i rotated the trays mid midway at eight at nine minutes after it had been my sauce I need to turn down. Um, it cooked for 18 minutes since so I rotated the trays at nine. So I've already rotated, but, but just to show you how easy it is, you simply open the door and it'll stop. You don't have to press stop or anything. And you just take one tray and you take the other tray and then you stick it up there and you stick this one down here and then you close the door and it starts again. So it's really, really easy to do. So these are the mini oven mitts. I mentioned those before. I'm gonna hit cancel, and then you always have to unplug it. There is no on-off switch, so you, you do have to unplug it, and that's for safety reasons. These are our um, hot pad and trivets. They come in gray now. Um, so I'm gonna just take these out and put them on those hot pads. Look how beautiful that is perfect chicken parm and it's it was so easy and I don't have an oil mess to clean up I just have sauce on the stove cooking over there um, those are the old pots and the old batter bowl that we have you know I've been doing paper chefs so long that I just um, 
have so much stuff. So anyway, so there's the, the mix. So what I'm gonna do here, you can see that the, this is so hot, so you can see that the tray has some crumbs and with something like this, um, you might get crumbs, you know, maybe in the door here and, um, and so I usually do this after it's totally cool. It's, I need to wait till it's cool, sorry. Okay, this is, <clears throat> um, I'm gonna show you how to t remove the air fryer door and also how to put the basket in and out. Um, the basket, the skewers, and the spit for the rotisserie would all work the same way. So basically, to put the basket in, of course you wanna have the door closed if you're gonna cook. And so there's little things on the side here. I don't know how much you can see there. But there's a little thing here and a little thing here and they're different and you got to put it in the left side first and then let it slide onto the right side so basically you go on to that shelf level and you you get it in there and then it sits on the right side and then it'll rotate it, you can't spin it it has to rotate by the mechanism then when you take it out of course it's going to be hot so you have this and use this same tool for all the accessories. But you just take this and lift it. And, it, and again, you wanna lift the right side and move it to the right to get it out, because it's like going into the hole on the left side. So you move it right, and then you, you can take it out like that. And then, you, of course, if it's hot, you need to set it on a hot pad or something like that and remove your French fries or whatever. Okay, so I have some crumbs here in the door because of the crumbs that fell from the chicken parmesan that I did. And so this has little latches on each side of this door right down here. And I know you can't see them, but but that's where they would be. And so then you just use your thumb or fingers or whatever, and you push them toward each other, and the door comes off just like that. And you can actually wash the door. You just don't wanna try to avoid getting water inside, you know, which if you do, it'll, It'll come out, you know, it'll drain out and then air dry eventually. But, you know, I just, I wash the outside here and without getting water all through it. And then <clears throat> all you have to do is wipe the inside. I There's usually nothing on the sides or the back. It's usually just all on the bottom, but I, I wipe it all anyway, just out of obligation. There's a tray right here. It looks a lot like the... Um, trays that you put food on but it's not this is a tray to protect the heating element the heating element is up here um and so this prevents food from getting into that heating element so like if you have a rotisserie chicken and maybe you made it too big and it's brushing the top surface so so i would put this in the dishwasher once in a while um but i don't clean that very often it doesn't need it very often so anyway you just wipe it all down and and it's clean it's very easy to do um <clears throat> Another nice thing is you pick this up from the bottom just like you do the quick cooker and it's not heavy to, to move from one place to the other. And there's something else I wanted to tell you. What was it? I know I'll think of it later. Um, maybe I'll type it in the description when I think of it. Okay, so that's it. That's the air fryer. So versatile. You can just do so many things. Um, that I literally use it every day. You know, some people throw away their toasters or their toaster ovens and, and use this for that. I still have my toaster oven, but I probably should use this because it works better. Um, this is, it's just awesome. So like in the dehydrating, you can do beef jerky and all kinds of um, dehydrate fruits or vegetables or whatever. So it's, it's just very, very handy. The, the basket goes in the dishwasher, <clears throat> the skewers and the, uh, rotisserie can go in the dishwasher, but not the door. Don't put the door in the dishwasher. Um, okay, that's it. Bye.